All right, In the Heights is directed by John M. Chu, and it stars Anthony Ramos, Corey Hawkins, Leslie Grace, Melissa Barrera, Olga Meredith, Jimmy Smith, Gregory Diaz IV, and many others that come and go throughout the film. If you're not familiar with In the Heights, it is a film version of the Broadway musical in which Usnavi, a sympathetic New York bodega owner, he saves every penny every day as he imagines and sings about a better life. All right, let's get into this. As we somewhat alluded to in the intro, a lot of hype surrounding this film coming into the weekend. Um, the reaction to it was surprisingly a little bit mixed. A lot of people really loving the film, really going for it, though. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on it, Ryan, where you sit on that spectrum. So we'll start with you, my friend. Ryan, what did you think about In the Heights? Well, yeah, I mean, it's been a sort of crazy roller coaster weekend with this movie going from the box office results, which I'm not going to talk about. But, you know, that's the only th- time I'm ever going to talk about them mm-hmm. um, to uh, the critical response, which has been overwhelming. Uh, film Twitter's response, for the most part, has been very positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, cinema score was an A. So that's yeah. also very good as well. Yeah. Um, but it just, you know, hasn't been able to have as many people as we would like a movie like this uh, to be in front of. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's not a Hamilton. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. a giant, big musical. I'm sure if this was Hamilton, this was the live action of Hamilton, it would have made triple the money. You know, it sure. would have it would have had even a stronger reaction. We'd be talking about it safely within Oscar conversations and all these different things like that. And I still think this movie can have that um, because some, some musicals have longer legs and everything, but uh, I saw this movie. Ooh, about a month ago, uh, Warner brothers was able to uh, send me an, an advance uh, screener of the film. And uh, mm-hmm. I was, I, I could not wait. I think I got it really late at night and I watched it at like 1230 in the morning Um, because I was just, I was just dying to see it. And I think that the reason why I was dying to see it is because, um, it's no secret. Most people know this. If you don't know this, now you're going to find this out. Um, is that, um, I am in a Mexican American critic always have Mm -hmm. been. Um, I've never identified as anything other than that. And to finally see a movie like this, where people that look like my family look like me representation on the screen, We'll talk about a lot of that uh, throughout this review tonight. Mm -hmm. It really spoke to me. And I do like Lin-Manuel Miranda. I like Hamilton. I know it is now passe to start hating on that now that uh, we were fortunate enough to get something. And I will never understand that. I will never never understand (laughs) the idea of hating something simply because it's popular. It drives me crazy. I think we all got it. And people finally didn't have to pay eight hundred dollars to see it. Yeah, and then people were all like, "Oh, this is it!" And I'm like, "Oh, uh, you're lucky you even got this." So like, be, <laughs> it was so behave. predictable. As soon like, as it, this, so, as soon as so, it dropped on Disney Plus, the inevitable, oh, this is so overrated, and Lin Manuel yeah. is not a talent. Like those yeah. takes were coming, and it's and I was great. And, oh, he's you know he's this, oh he's that. It's like okay, you know, okay, yeah. see yourself out the door. <laughs> um, you know, I don't care what you have to say. Yeah, um, but. This property I was not really familiar with. I knew that it existed, but uh, you know, like most people, I think we've been discovering Lynn's work through Hamilton over the last couple of years. In the Heights has been something that's really personal and deep to him. It's uh, you know, sort of loosely based off of you know the yeah. neighborhood in which yeah. he grew up in, and it's you know, it's been something of a labor of love from winning the Tony for Best Musical all the way to ten years in the process of being made. And I think that by <laughs> It was like three o'clock in the morning when I finished it or whatever. Uh, I just sat there and I went, yeah, this is the best movie of the year so far. And it wasn't even close. And the reason why is because beyond the personal inflections that this movie placed upon me while I was watching it, which I will get into, um, this was a movie that I just was like, this has a different energy than anything else that we've seen so far this year. It has such vibrancy, such fun, richness, it's colorful. It's deeply moving. It's one of those things where you just want to get up and sing and dance 
with all these characters, whether you're watching it at home or whether you're, you know, in the movie theater, it just has what movies do, which is, which is, it has that magical quality that I think misses a lot of marks with musical adaptations. Some of them, they get very serious or some of them are, are too campy. I think this is just a ultimate blend of that, but it's also more than that. It is a look into a community. It is a look into a world that we normally do not get to see on the big screen through John M. Chu's direction, through Lin-Manuel Miranda's, you know, original property, him helping out as a producer here to uh, the screenplay to this amazing cast that we'll talk about in this tapestry of music Mm -hmm. is all put together through this insanely difficult and awesome choreography. Some of the Mm -hmm. most inventive choreography we've seen in a musical adaptation this century uh, missed with Alex Brooks's wonderful cinematography. Uh, And the movie just is edited in flow so perfectly. This is a movie that I I rewatched when it, when it was released a month apart. And I usually, as you know, don't have a lot of time in between to watch Mm -hmm. many things over and over again, but I had to. And because I just wanted to make sure that this wasn't a fluke, that this wasn't a dream that somebody finally put movies out there for me that I can see me that I can see my wife, that I can see my family on a screen. Mm. And for that alone, it's special. There's other things that we'll talk about, and obviously specifics within the film, uh, scenes that I just think are going to be hard for me to get through. Mm. But ultimately, In the Heights is an absolute game changer for the musical genre, and it is my favorite film of the year so far. Yeah, that is really great to hear. I love that for you personally, and it's a great example of why representation does matter. So that is really exciting to hear. As for my experience with it, a little bit of pretext. I'm like you. I'm a big fan of Lin-Manuel Miranda. I really loved Hamilton when that dropped. I got a chance to see a traveling version of the stage play first, which was really incredible and then getting to see the broadway version of it that dropped on disney plus last year i thought was really fun a great complimentary piece to it so i was very much looking forward to in the heights even though i never got a chance to see any sort of stage version of it the trailers were very appealing it certainly had that lin-manuel flavor to it that uh, was so prominent in something like hamilton and In so many ways, this film is everything that I love about musical movies. There's an energy and exuberance to it. The music is wonderfully varied and always engaging. The production design and choreography, as you're talking about, Ryan, is sublime. The editing is really great. The Mm -hmm. performances are dazzling. And as a result, it makes for a funny incessantly entertaining, sometimes poignant, and thoroughly enjoyable experience. It's a lot of fun. Is it narratively and thematically messy? Maybe there has been some debate about that, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't make it less delightful. I still loved it despite a few blemishes here and there. It's easy to forget any of those faults when you get sequences like the opening scene on the streets and the energy of it, the dancing and the choreography, some of the skillful editing on display there. It's a gripping way to start the film or the pool sequence that we get midway through, which Mm -hmm. is heavily in the trailer, but in context of the film, I think it's even better or on a different note, tonally, the Abuela Claudio number near the end of the film, a really moving scene that I was completely engrossed by from moment to moment, despite how some of the conflict and themes evolve and however you feel about that, the artistic craft embedded into the heart of this film is undeniable. And that was enough for me. Perhaps we can talk about the discourse surrounding it, although I'm not sure I'm the right guy for it. We'll talk about Bo Burnham later on in the show. But like he says in Inside, maybe I should just shut the f*** 
fuck up and let those more qualified <laughs> than me talk about this film, which is why I'm glad you're here, Ryan. I'll certainly offer my thoughts to it, but your passion for it is clearly palpable and your perspective certainly matters more than mine, especially given what you had to say there. But on the whole, I still really, really like this film a lot. Mm -hmm. I think I have heard those criticisms too about the narrative or sort of the plot being very thin or being basic. I sit there and go, well, who's saying those things? Because from the most of the people I'm hearing those comments from, it's not people that are actually people within the Latin community that know what this sort of struggle of these characters are really all about. And maybe, and maybe that is, you know, a problem within the film or not for them, but for me, everything about this movie was relatable. Mm. You have Usnavi played by Anthony Ramos, not Ramos, just putting that out there. Not for you, JD, but for everybody out there. I've been here. No, a while. That was definitely for been, me as well. <laughs> I'm putting a lot of whys in there, um, which, you know, and I'm sorry. Uh, I'm terrible. It's okay. With names. It's okay, buddy. I just, I just look, my last, my last name is Duran and that's not really how you say it, but that's how I've said <laughs> it my get, whole life. <laughs> I get you. I get you. I'm just like Ramos. Um, yeah. I didn't know it was an episode of everybody loves Raymond on, on all these movie podcasts. Yeah. Anyway, um, I will say this about Usnavi is he is very much a, a guy that's worked his entire life, you know, to just make it to be exactly either even or poor. Mm -hmm. And he has this opportunity to go back to those places in your childhood that you remember the most. I mean, with my family, <laughs> the only times I see my family now are either holidays or funerals or weddings. And we talk about the past a lot and how those moments we could wish we could go back to and hold on to them like lightning in a bottle. And he has this opportunity and he wants everyone to sort of experience that with him. It's very much the, the, the difference. It's, it's sort of the just position of somebody wanting to get away. It's, it's wanting to go back and, and do something and be in where they think they are actually home because this, this dream really hasn't worked out for him or it's, it's not as fulfilling as what it used to be. So you have that, that angle. You have the character of Nina, who, I mean, growing up in a Hispanic household, I mean, Nina's, <laughs> her struggles are very, 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 very relatable because you have a lot of people in the Hispanic community that have, or, you know, the kids nowadays are their first generation going to college. And not only does Nina have the, the pressures of her father uh, her mother, you know, her deceased mother and everything and her friends, she has an entire community and those expectations and those shoulders. I mean, there's a literally a line in the film that Jimmy Smith says, isn't she our best? Isn't she our best mm -hmm. hope when she is sort of fighting the idea of going back to school and uh, because she was racially profiled and doesn't really know if she's ready for that kind of responsibility and feel the full weight of it being a token of the white society that she you know, that she went to at Stanford as opposed to being then this other beacon of hope for an entire block that will never have the opportunity that she had based on grades. And, you know, her even with all those grades and everything, her father having to sacrifice so much, families having to sacrifice so much nowadays to to pay for a child to go through college, especially when they don't aren't as well off as others. Then you have you know, Melissa Bar uh, Barrera's character in Vanessa, she is this girl that is like, I still want to live in this city. I don't want to go to college. I have this dream of being a fashion designer and mm -hmm. I just, I, I just want to get out of this neighborhood because it's like, I think if I move yeah. uptown instead of moving out of the you know country, if I move, just move uptown, my prospects will go up and she has, you know, limitations as well. You have the hairstylist where there there's that gentrification where they're being, sort of rented out and having to move because of the fact that they can't afford it anymore. And then you have a well, Claudia who is, who is very much this matriarch that takes care of everyone that is, that is there for every single person. Um, that is the grandmother for an entire community, but really for our specific characters that we're involved with, like most musicals do. Um, and then you have Sonny who is, you know, this kid who is Yusnavi's cousin 
And that is where the undocumented in this country, especially in this um, subsect of the country, starts to show within the film. And there's that representation that goes with it. And mixed with all within this is a lot of hard work, wanting, desire, and and just the, that number in the middle, the 96,000. That is a song that really hits very hard within the community because there's a line that Benny says, played by Corey Hawkins, where, where they basically he says that it's just this money won't solve all of our problems, but it'll just give us a weekend to breathe easy for a little bit, to just sit back yeah. and breathe. And then, of course, there's Nina's song where it's just breathe because, you know, she has to confront her father. This idea of not being able to breathe, not being able to take a break. It's <laughs> take a break, a Hamilton song reference. Um, but it it's very much within this community. It's, a, it's one of the most hardworking communities on the planet, especially right now in this in this country. And to see all that put up on a screen, it's much more layered than just, oh, they have a dream, they have a dream, they have a dream, they have a dream, they have a dream. Everybody's got dreams, move on. It's much more complex. It's much more layered than that. It's much more meaningful when you've walked in those people's shoes because mm. those shoes are still the ones that you're walking in today. And it's it, to me, it's so personal. Like, Abuela Claudia's song, Polencia y Fe, all right? I watched this movie on the one-year anniversary of my grandmother passing, and she came to this country much like Abuela Claudia, played by Olga Merides in this film. And you talk about it as her parents, they came to this country looking for better opportunities. And through her, those opportunities, she got to build the life that she had, to which then she's able to give back so much to her community. She talks about it throughout the the decision for Usnavi to go back to his home, and he's going with her. And she looks at him and says, have I done enough for my community? I've, I've done enough for him, right? Mm-hmm. And Usnavi says, more than so. My grandmother had eight children and so many grandchildren and great grandchildren. And, you know, it, it's, it's all about for that generation, the legacy that they leave behind. And so when you get to, um, you know, numbers after that, you know, especially Carnival de Barrio, when that sequence comes, like you literally hear uh, Daniela look at him and said, what's the, why is everybody so glum? Why is everybody so down? Why, th- this is how we celebrate this woman's life. She wouldn't want this. Mm-hmm. She'd want us to thrive and move on. And it's and it's no different than in my family over the last year. We've we've had you know a lot of successes, and obviously we've had a lot of turmoil because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. But this movie is very much tethered to Latin American culture in the United States, around the world, of just all of it making sense. It clicks in the right place. And for the criticisms that you said, JD, and I'm sorry, I'm going long, but the criticisms that have been about this movie being a simple story to me reek of bogusness. And I don't think they fully understand. And maybe it's time for people to learn a little bit more instead of just saying it's simple and dismiss it. Because to me, that doesn't really mean that you actually learn anything while you're watching this film. Yeah, that is really interesting to hear. And obviously not being a part of that community, there could be a little bit of that feeding into some of the disconnect I have with it on a thematic level. Like I mentioned in my opening thoughts, this is a film I mostly enjoy. I had a ball with its aesthetics, the music, Mm -hmm. the characters, and... By the end, there's even a little bit of heart that is thrown in there that does make it an overall very effective experience. I do wonder, though, and you did touch on this there a little bit as you were talking about the film and what it meant to you in a very personal way, because there was this interesting polarity that I noticed in the film in the sense that there is a reverence that these characters have for Washington Heights that mm-hmm. is established in the opening number and those early sequences. But at the same time, there is this irony that many of them are wanting to leave. Aside from Nina, 
who had already left but is coming back for reasons mm-hmm. she gets into as the film unfolds. But even then, her reasoning for wanting to stay isn't really founded in a love for Washington Heights as much as it is other things. Mm-hmm. That said, as you were talking about, Asnavi wants to leave for the Dominican Republic, albeit for affable reasons, and he's trying to take Sonny and Abuela Claudio with him. Mm-hmm. Vanessa wants to leave to pursue her career in fashion. Daniela is taking her business to another area of New York City since her clients have already left Washington Heights due mm-hmm. to gentrification. So there is this interesting dichotomy of reverence for the block, but also this weird desperation to want out of it. That is until we get that final reveal near the end where it is addressed and one character in particular realizes that they've been exactly where they've needed to be this whole time. And I do love that idea. I absolutely love that idea, especially regarding some of the specifics you're talking about regarding Latin culture. And again, there is going to be a disparity because I certainly haven't been around it. I didn't grow up in it like you did. Oh, I'm, not, so, I'm not getting mad at you. I'm oh, just I know. I know. You know. I simply yeah. say that to say, you know, it's interesting to hear your perspective on it. As a film, though, and I'm only addressing it as a film, as a work of art where it's attempting to fully realize that I deal with these characters, I do think that is a bit jumbled. Mm. Uh, I think there are other films that do it a little bit better. For me, it's not the simplicity of it. I don't know if the film is tackling it in a way that is simple per se. I think that's a little bit superficial. There is conflict here. Mm -hmm. For me, it's more so about its execution. I just think it's a little messy in places, in particular in the back half of the film. Now, again, I haven't seen the stage production. Maybe there's something left on the cutting room floor as they adapted this into film form. But that idea, as much as I love it, I don't know if it fully works. But when it does work, in particular with us Navi and, you know, again, some of the reveals of the back half, it borderlines on maybe being a little schmaltzy at times, but I also love that stuff. I love that mm-hmm. the character, it, 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 with what he realizes as it relates to family and this little pocket of life that he has in New York, in Washington Heights, and ultimately what that means for him in the end, despite you know some of the execution of it, Uh, I still think overall it's effective. And then you couple Mm -hmm. that again with the production of this film and the music and the energy of it. It's far from being a major distraction, I think. Mm -hmm. And that to me is the difference between where I sit with some of these criticisms and I think where other critics have taken it, Um, at least regarding that specifically, regarding the plot and the themes of this film. Mm. I can understand. I sympathize with the criticisms, but at the same time, are they really that much of a detractor when you couple it with everything else? And maybe it just comes down to, you know, musicals of this style, especially maybe, maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's where people are having a, a disconnect with the film in terms of engagement, because I just, I can't sit here, watch this movie and think, well, you know, the themes and the conflict might be a little thin, but, uh, you know, and, and that's, that's going to take me completely out of the movie when everything else is so utterly engaging. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? It does. But I think also this movie for the most part, unlike a lot of movie musicals, a lot of its narrative and a lot of its, a lot of its plot and, 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 and everything really is within the songs. I mean, like I think the songs here are, are, are so important because yeah. that's where a lot of these characters are really speaking and really talking yeah. about the things and their feelings. You know, musicals mm-hmm. do that all the time, but I think this one really specifically just nails it down. I haven't seen a movie do this quite like it since probably like Rob Marshall's Chicago, 
where it really uses the music as such a vital point to understand the characters as much as, as, as much as, you know, more dialogue would suggest. But I think you're right. I'm especially about Usnavi played by Anthony Ramos, who is, I mean, good God, <laughs> JD. He's, he is a, a future superstar. If not, mm-hmm. this is the, the makings of a superstar right in front of us. I mean, you know, he is known for being in the, the original Hamilton cast. He's got a very small part in that. Uh, he was in like a star is born. Uh, he was in that John David Washington film that you really liked. Oh back in yeah. 2018. Uh, what was that? Uh, uh, Monsters and men. Yes. That, that's not yeah. right. Yep. Um, and, uh, and I thought he was really good. He in that was too. great in that. Yeah. And uh, he's just someone that I totally related with by, you know, from the beginning of this movie and what a great, conduit i mean he has the the sort of device where he is talking to these kids about uh what is you know we see in the film as in the past and really talking to them about this this world that it was fading away right in front of them and it's really fading away a lot for a lot of people nowadays you know it's a lot of especially like covid and the economic crisis and things mm-hmm. like that it affects communities like this like washington heights that we see in this film it really does uh, you know, rents and everything just being piled up. And it all starts with that, that first number, right? Cause it, he talks about, mm-hmm. he's this guy struggling to own this bodega. Right. And he's the, the guy that makes all the coffee for everyone. So yeah. that, and, and they talk about that literally in the song of like, you know, I can't, can't start my day without cafe. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. you see Jimmy Smith, you see the, the Vanessa, you see Corey Hawkins, you see, all the characters come into that bodega, pick up their drink, pick up their coffee and start their day. And it's all run through him. And, and, and what's so great about it is, is that that first eight minutes, JD might be the best eight minutes we've seen in film in quite some time. I mean, it's so electric. The, the choreography just sets you up. The music is, is getting you into the vibe of all this. And you're just right from those moments, understanding where these characters are going to be at for the entire ride. Mm -hmm. And we see that evolution. I think the relationship really for me that solidified this film on the second watch as, as, as much as I loved Usnavi and Vanessa's, you know, sort of courtship or, you know, Abuela Claudia and Olga Miranda's wonderful performance. I mean, for God's sake, she's great. Just, Holy shit! What 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 a number that she has in the middle of that film mm-hmm. um, is the relationship between uh, Leslie Grace's character Nina and her and her father, played by Jimmy Smits, and it's the struggle back and forth between you know this parent and this daughter of what's best for her life and if it's actually the life that she wants or is it the one that he wants, and I think when she makes her final decision. At the end of the film, JD, when she finds out what she wants to do, there is mm-hmm. a moment in that where Jimmy Smith looks at his daughter. And I'm sorry here to get a little just emotional, but he says, Wow, this is when you see a life that I couldn't see for you mm-hmm. or that I could never get. Yeah. This is the moment where you go past my dreams and your dreams are in another stratosphere. And one day every parent's going to feel like that. But in our community, especially the idea of making a better life for your child. So then they don't have to do the struggle and the work that your parents did. Your grandparents did your great grandparents did. It's in seat. And mm-hmm. that hit me like a ton of bricks along with Olga Meredith's performance who by the end she's talking to her mother you know and, and speaking to have I done enough and if so if I've done enough looking at everyone in this blackouts laying on her bed it's just like I think I've left a place better than which I found it mm-hmm. and I think that that's another underlying theme of the hard work within this community that's why when the songs later in the film when you see all this it's just like hey this community is still vibrant we're still here don't put your head down don't get upset these are things 
through generations that we will continue to do and continue to celebrate and strive. And we will be off the backbone of people like Jimmy Smith's like Abuela Claudia in this film who did all that work so that we could then maybe down the road, find that moment of breathing easy without having to win a once in a lifetime lottery. Yeah. I completely agree with a lot of what you're saying in terms of the Nina Kevin relationship. Their dynamic was also my favorite in the film. As much as I like us Navi as a character and his relationship, his dynamic with Vanessa so is good. mostly great. There are some contrivances regarding some of the drama that I didn't fully buy the scene at the club. For example, I didn't oh. really buy much. Of oh man. That. I, I bought that as a, as a guy with no <laughs> game. I can tell you, like I, it just, you know, I've seen it too many times, guys. Okay, like, you can you can be the most good looking guy in the world. You don't got any game, or you're an <laughs> idiot, and you do something. I mean, come on, JD. This this is a universal thing here for me. How many guys yeah. in the world have had a beautiful woman and they've screwed that thing up before well, the end of the night? I mean, I'm not. I'm certainly not. Fair. I'm certainly not questioning the reality that that <laughs> could happen. Yeah, for sure, it's happened, and they did set up earlier that he's. Uh, a bit no weak skills. around her, for sure. Yeah. They do set that up. But given that they agreed to go out on this day, and there's mm-hmm. not much pretext to it, I guess there was a moment at the dinner where you know where he first sees her, and that's a really great moment where yeah. she's dressed up and he's jaw-dropped he's by that, looking at her. He's just that same bumbling idiot. And yeah. really, it's not even him setting up the date. It's his cousin that sets up the date. He has the 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 skills enough to do that, but he's like, yeah. But then after, of course, she leaves. Then he's all like, yeah. Did you see what I did? I did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, like, I guess, yeah, dude. I guess you where know? it becomes contrived to me is that they get to the club, and he's still a bit yeah. of a bumbling it, buffoon, at least a little idiot, bit. Yeah. He's not sure what to do. He yeah. says yes to her going out on the dance floor. And then sometime later, he gets mad at her for decisions he made. Like, yeah, it, for well, me, no, it's, he, it's an execution thing. Well, it I just think they, feels weird yeah. to me. No, I get you. I think they both, uh, you know, well, he did abandon her, but then also too, like tried to find her and, and the frustrations well, of the moment. I mean, exa- all of us do stupid things in the moment. Like, let's well, just, and, let's and just again, point that out that's there. It's like very relatable. And that's why, like, and that to me is why it feels contrived. Because in the moment, in the moment, it's probably not, you know, you probably get mad and angry, you know, everything because you're in a blackout, you know what I mean? But you Monday morning quarterback and you're like, wow, you're an idiot, dude. Like, like yeah, like, yeah. and I get that. I mean, and, and he rectifies this, you know, and yeah. all that. But, you know, it's it. Yeah. It, takes, it, sometimes it takes a guy to think, you know, about like he says later on, it takes a it takes moments for him to realize like the most important people in his life. And all he could think about was her. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, so. I do understand where it's going dramatically. And yeah. as I mentioned I earlier, you. I find much of it affable. For me, it's mostly an execution thing. It just feels a little forced so we can get to some of that sure. conflict, eventually getting to that resolution that we get at the end. But that is to say, I think that's why Nina and Kevin are my favorite end of film because I really have no issues at all. Aside from, and this really isn't much to do with Nina and Kevin, but there is that whole scene of Nina having that epiphany because of this one random scene as it gets into DACA dreamers and undocumented citizens. Um, well, uh, it is it is laid down that, and I think this might be something more in the musical, that it's not there and in, in everything, but she does have this really connection with Sonny because she used to be his babysitter and everything and he you know he invites her to this thing and you know everyone in this community yeah. is very close i mean yeah you know, they, again they, you know, i don't have and, a problem with what yeah. it's tackling as much as this one political issue there's only a singular moment of it in the film and that's the only time well, he doesn't yeah the film he addresses doesn't. that specifically and again, the resolution of it is incredibly well, endearing it's with not Sonny the one, and where that it's, goes at the end. It's not the only time. If you remember the Mark Anthony scene, which is which is a, a vital scene, I think, to that whole subtext, you know, subtext and that storyline is when 
Anthony Ramos is going to Mark Anthony, who is in this for like four or five minutes. And yeah, it's actually asking really, him if Sonny can go to, with him to Yeah, and he's like, let me ask you. Yeah. And he goes and asks him, like, let me ask you a question. How, you pay my son, right? And he goes, yeah. yeah. And he's like, I pay him cash. And it's like, and why is it that That's you a great that? point. That you is a good. I mean? That is a good moment in the film. Yeah. Again, I th- maybe that's where it comes to execution. Little things. In because yeah. Yeah. you get that one little moment, and then there's another thirty minutes where so much other stuff happens, and then we yeah. circle back to that moment in the streets. So again, fundamentally, what's there on paper, have no yeah. issue with it. It is a real issue that people have to deal with. I fully understand that. For me, in terms of it being a film, I think that's where in execution it just feels a little odd. But that said, yeah. the epiphany comes, and as it relates to Nina and Kevin in particular, I love where that goes. And that moment you're talking about where Kevin talks about her maturing right in front of his eyes, that is such an exquisite moment. It is really great. I love seeing how their motives um, evolve how they intersect with each other. Even from the very beginning, you understand why Kevin is making the moves that he does, even if it's mm-hmm. affecting others around him. Yep. Um, and yet you also understand because of some of the things that she brings up as far as feeling isolated at school. Then there's the moment with her roommate that she brings up at one point. Like you mm-hmm. truly come to understand why she wants to move back to Washington Heights, why she doesn't want to go back to school. And yet on the other end of the token, we understand why Kevin as her father wants the very best. And then it concludes in this really great way. So again, a slight, maybe a slight contrivance, but I, I really don't care in the end because where it goes with that relationship in particular is incredible. It is, it is so, so moving. So I, I, I am completely with you on that. As much as I love these other characters, and I think really they're all wonderful uh, mm-hmm. for various reasons, but that particular re- relationship, I think, had the most heft to it, at least for me. No, no, I totally agree with you, and and I mean we've talked about a lot of these characters and and uh, and, and everything, JD, and I, I I think that the one thing um, that I love especially is um, the choreography in this film I think is is something like it it makes me sit there watching this movie and go damn why don't we have best choreography at the Oscars I mean like for God's sake like I know John M. Chu comes from the step it up series and and that's really what made him get this job is what is being reported by Lin-Manuel Miranda but there's a lot of different sequences and directorial choices that he makes I mean there's that shot that everyone sort of uh putting up online of Usnavi looking from the gro- you know from the bodega and seeing in the street and everyone's dancing and and you know going about their day at the, in the opening yeah. sequence you have the 96000 at the pool that whole sequence is just you have all these different sets and everything building up to uh like guys flipping in pools and and the the camera going under the water and scoping up and uh you know showing like this o- overhead shot of like mm-hmm. Uh, of like flowers, you know, in the pool and um, another sequence that I'll talk about later, the Carnival de Barrio, that whole sequence. Then you have little directorial flourishes that I think are, are really cute. And, 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 and also really interesting is the whole, uh, there's this sequence where Benny and Nina are outside and looking, uh, I guess on her balcony and they do sort of this dancing and it almost is, you know, the camera's moving in all these different ways. And it's, it, uh, it's been called, uh, like an inception sort of type shot where, you know, the, the, the building's moving and the camera's moving up and down and they had to sort of build it in, in this, um, in this warehouse from what I saw from behind the scenes. And that sequence is just breathtaking because also too, you know, that those actors are actually doing the dancing which is great. Yeah. And then champagne at the, uh, the, the song where, um, you know, Vanessa goes to Usnavi's empty apartment at the end of the, the film. It's all one shot. It's a, you know, it's a, it's, a, you know, Chu decides to do a one an entire time and follow this couple as they're going back and forth to try to just open this bottle of champagne. 
and confess the, uh, you know, their feelings for one another. Mm-hmm. And it's all those little things that just sort of add up to the grand spectacle of why this movie is a small story, but has a big scope. And, it, and really the film itself is of its messages, little details like what uh, Abuela Claudia says, the little details in life make everything. Yeah. Right. And so the little directorial flourishes that are put into this movie separate it from a lot of movie musicals that we've seen before. And hopefully we see in the future. I mean, I hope we get this felt very personal. John M. Chu talked about his immigrant story, uh, you know, as his Asian family and how he connected it with lens and how it's connected with a lot of this cast and the people that made this film. Mm -hmm. It feels very personal from that standpoint. That's why I don't think that there's any like sort of, uh, as we've I've seen some backlash coming towards it. I don't think that this movie is anything but a joyous time of the theater. There's no malicious intent whatsoever behind it. It is just the a kind of movie you would want to see during the summer, right, JD? Mm-hmm. We talk about movies. You know, obviously, there's you know the whole debate about going back to the theater and whatnot. This is a movie I think you got to see on the big screen because of all the beauty and the vibrant colors and the directorial style that's being presented to you, Chu goes all out for this thing. And mm-hmm. I commend the hell out of him for doing that. Yeah, I do as well. And that comes with the territory, I think, with musicals, right? Like yeah. they tend to have an exuberance to them. There's a lot of movement. And with Lin-Manuel Miranda's style, there's obviously a lot of lyricism. There's a lot of poetry to it. And that, I think, correlates well with the editing, which is often brisk and quick. Uh, But I think that's very complementary to the style of Lin-Manuel Miranda and what he's tapping into with this particular material. And and I love that in Chu's direction in terms of what he brings to this film aesthetically. And yes, it's a lot, but that is a music. It's a musical. I don't know if I can name a musical that is restrained in its approach. Is there one? I don't know if there is. And and maybe there are, but many of them, you know, they come with a a certain caliber of dazzle. Yeah. They're they're often very evocative and elegant, and there are so many different moving pieces. That's what makes the choreography alluring and very entertaining. I mean, maybe umbrellas of Shaborg at times, that's a little bit maybe restrained compared to the conventional norm, but I'd say for the most part, this, you know, it fits the bill and I think choose direction does it wonderfully. And I think it all, it, it complements Lin-Manuel Miranda's original vision, at least what I can tell. I never saw the stage play, but given yeah. the lyricism, depicted here and what he's going after and you know and what i've seen with hamilton for me it it, it all seems to align very well let's go ahead and get two final thoughts though we'll go back to you ryan do you have any concluding thoughts here on in the heights yeah i got uh just two final thoughts here so i've mentioned it a couple times there's uh i think it might be my favorite sequence in the film uh it's the uh carnival de barrio sequence and it's when this movie, I think, feels the most alive with everyone around it. But especially because there's a moment after Usnavi comes into the fold where all the flags of the community or the community itself get to celebrate themselves. And they're talking about how proud they are of themselves, their heritage, those flags that they wave in their arms and hold and hold tight daily or just a fresh reminder of, of what um, is so important to them. There's a moment when Ramos and, and Miranda who plays uh, the Piagua guy, who's like a, uh, you know, snow, snow cone guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the film, it's a little cameo for Lynn and they're singing to one another. And then it, it's then the community singing with it. And it just felt so beautiful seeing this movie isn't (laughs) as much as we've sort of talked about it, like being all these heavy dreams and, and and all these heavy themes and all these, all these things in between this movie is vibrant and fun. Yeah. And it's Mm -hmm. also just deeply moving to see 
all these characters celebrate and hug and jump and scream and about their heritage and how much they, you know, how proud they are. Yeah. And that sequence is the scene of the year. Mm. Like we'll just, we'll just call it now. I mean, we don't even have to have six more months. I don't think for me, <laughs> we don't need it. Okay. We don't need it. I mean, yeah. like I'm, I'm, I would, it would be hard pressed to find another scene this year that means so much to me to see the, that flag of my ancestors flag that is 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 you know the, the american flag gets put in so many films to see that flag in such a positive manner right we talk about this mm-hmm. with other you know uh you know racial groups we talk about this with asians we talk about this with with african american black uh you know uh, characters we talk about this you know just within culture in general to see more positive interactions with cultures on screen. It's nice to see that. It's nice to be able to like one day be able to show your kids something like this. Now, my second thought is I am going to talk a little bit about the controversy that has uh, taken place over the last day or so um, Mm -hmm. in, in regards to uh, some interviews that were done with the cast in John M. Chu about uh, colorism, especially within the Afro Latina community, and their, uh, you know, they're sort of uh, not really loving the fact that a lot of the characters, especially the leads themselves, were um, light skinned Latinos, um, that, you know, or a lighter shade of Latino. Uh, I'll say this about it I understand a lot of the criticisms. I understand the questions that are being asked. They're very valid. There's no, there's, there's, um, it's no different than I would want to see myself on a screen, JD, or you would want to see yourself Mm -hmm. on a screen. People want to see themselves on a screen. I totally understand. I will say one thing. This movie is done without a malicious intent. Like I said before, I don't think that this movie deserves to have a target on its back. I think this movie tried to do something that a big studio doesn't do a lot. Nowadays, and I believe a movie like this, Kansas Seed, we can have more of them. We can dive deeper into our culture, and that doesn't mean that there should have been more representation. I just think that to hurt the progress of what we got is a little counterintuitive, and it made me a little just sad to see that that we couldn't have a weekend to celebrate this. And said, we're, you know, and, and I appreciate the conversation. I really do. But I just would have liked a little bit more time to celebrate this rather than starting to deep dive into it. And yeah. uh, Miranda apologized. I think we should totally give him the benefit of the doubt. The man has done more for, especially on stage and now on screen for representation than many creatives do in their entire lifespan. Um, you know, you, you go down the list of directors JD that we love that barely have minorities as a, as a character, let alone a lead in their film. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I will say that um, my heart is out to, um, you know, the Afro Latina community. Um, I, I, I feel for them. I understand where they're coming from. Um, I just, I, I just, it's, it, we'll get better. And I think that we're always progressing. We're always moving forward. It's it's no diff it's no need to get into I think negative space w- about this film just yeah I understand it we got to get better I think the cast and the director's responses were bad they were just bad responses terrible really didn't get to the point of having actually a dialogue mm-hmm. but I also don't think in like five minute interviews you're gonna get those you're gonna get mm-hmm. the answer to that question yeah. and one movie does not represent an entire race. And I think we need to know that as well. This movie is not going to solve all the problems with diversity. No film does. It's the idea that a movie like this can be celebrated. Hopefully it has legs at box office, I guess. That's the only thing is have legs at box office so then we can make more films like this so we can have more and more different types of representation. Because once we do that, then we are truly seen at that point. Yeah, very much. I think that is very well said. I do agree with you. I empathize with those who feel left out and the discourse around colorism is certainly a significant one and one that we should be having. 
Uh, but at the same time, I do agree with you. I do hope that this film can be celebrated for what it is, for what it's trying to do. I agree with you. I don't think there's any malicious intent on the filmmaker's part by any means. At least it doesn't seem to be. But Hollywood generally, especially those running the studios, there is a history of them not making great choices as it relates to colorism. So I very much do empathize with why the argument is there, why there is a fight for equality and representation on screen as it relates to to that conversation. Uh, but I do hope that we can celebrate this film. I hope that it picks up legs at the box office, like you're saying, or in streaming at home on HBO Max, because there is a lot of fun to be had with this film. It is very vibrant, as you're saying. As we've been talking about, really going back to our opening thoughts, there is just an energy to this film that levitates, that I just absolutely adore and ate up. And for me, it overcame much of the criticisms that I have of this film. And I do think that at times it's thematically baffling, narratively maybe a little bit uneven, but those are small quibbles in the grand scheme of things. I overall still very much like this movie. My mm -hmm. last final thought, and I'll be curious to hear your thoughts on this if you have any, Ryan. And again, this isn't a criticism. It's more so an observation. And I think it points back to perhaps another disconnect or potential disconnect that I have with Asnavi in the sense that he is a business owner. Mm -hmm. I find that interesting. And I think it's why I really, really love the idea that he's wanting to go back to the Dominican, not so much because he feels like his life isn't great or that he needs something quote unquote better as it's put in the synopsis. It's really less that and more so he wants to go to the Dominican because that's where his father's bar was and his father is no longer with him. So part of it is nostalgic. At one point he even references that his best memories as a child, are connected to being with his father and being at that bar. So he wants to go back there to honor his late father. Mm -hmm. That, to me, I don't want to say important, but I find very compelling, to me anyway, because you're talking about an individual who, I think he says even at one point, he's not even in his 30s yet, or he's about to turn 30, mm -hmm. but he is a business owner, so this whole idea of being unsatisfied by the American dream, again, it's probably because I didn't grow up in the same culture as you, Ryan. I don't have you know, that, that same perspective, but I also grew up not having anything. So I do understand <laughs> the whole idea of growing up with absolutely nothing and wanting to do everything in your power to embrace the American dream, to achieve it, to want something better in your life. Um, and maybe the disconnect is our paths are going to be very different because mm. I will likely have more opportunities than someone like a snobby or even someone like yourself, given my particular background. Um, but I just, and again, I, I just find that interesting. He's someone yeah. that own, he owns his own business, mm -hmm. but is wanting something else. And, and I think I would have, again, not a problem. It's not a criticism, but I think there would be just a little bit more of a disconnect in terms of my personal attachment to us. Navi, yeah. if it simply was, Oh, I'm a business owner in my twenties and uh, this isn't good enough for me. That's not <laughs> what it is though. I think no, having not. the part with his father makes a world of, of difference for me. Well, it's, it's, it's about legacy. Right? Yeah, and it's about yeah. like you know, some some in the Latin community they they see what their family has, and and there's a real possessive ownership of what was built within, and so yeah. it's also going back to help your community. Yeah, you and know, it all circles it, back it, to it, that as well. The, yeah. It all circles back with that, but then that's yeah. really the overarching argument about you know what happens at the end of the film. It's like, well, what about the community that you're serving now? 
You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and you almost forget you that, that a little bit. And you, yeah. you take it for granted. Yeah. I mean, th- that's a universal thing in life is that we take what we have right here and for granted until things change. And then we make decisions and then we start second guessing that because we have done a lot and we have moved forward and we are, are in a place where it's not necessarily comfortable, but it's, it's good. Mm-hmm. And you know, he makes it, it makes us a, uh, a compelling complex character. Yeah, it does. not You're right. If it's more, oh, I'm just sick and tired of America. Then, it, then that's that. That's not really us. Or being a business <laughs> like, owner in your twenties, yeah. and it's like, like that's just, not common. Oh I my, don't think. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I'm wrong. Like, I don't know. But. No, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's not even like like Benny's character played by Corey Hawkins, right? Like that's a guy that's like he's in this business and 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 he really wants to impress his boss, and he's just like. Where am I going to be? Yeah, this is all done. exactly. Like, and and I have bigger dreams, and this is my stepping stone, and and I want something like mm-hmm. this within this community because I want to help out. And Usnavi sees it differently, and I and I like that they're friends because it's it shows that they both have different goals, uh, and how they approach it, they yeah. do it in different ways. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I I think that it, you know, obviously opportunities are different for others, but I think for him, he's making choices. You know, not just about himself. He's making it about uh, Sonny, Abuela, you know, his, you know, his, his father. And it's really putting himself last to really then see like, okay, but you have all these things in front of you that can actually make you happy and people still happy. And those realizations by the end make it even more emotional. And yes, there's some little, you know, like you said, there's like some hokey things at the end, uh, but uh, it, it's, it's, though a musical at the end of the day and there are all his hokey little things and musicals to wrap things up so yeah. I, I can give that a pass and i also think too leads to more emotional you know moments of how you're building your legacy by the end of it and i think that that's yeah another nice touch put on the end of this movie yeah absolutely even if it's obvious and execution yeah, again going yeah. back i mean to, like i saw it coming a mile away oh for like, sure i'm not i'm not you know i'm but not that, i'm not blind yeah you know I mean? <laughs> yeah but that whole idea of community again going back to that dichotomy of these characters wanting to leave washington heights yet still being drawn to it at the same time and how that circles back with us navi specifically and all of that even if you see where it's coming it is very endearing and for, and for me especially regarding how it ties back to his father uh, which is what is his main motivation throughout the entirety of the movie um, so I do ultimately like where things wrap up even if it is a little sloppy narratively in terms of those ideas um, and, and characterization I like all of it last last final thought and then we need to move on here I, I, we've mentioned it again, but I got to emphasize one more time. Olga Meredith is so good in this film. Holy, holy she crap. is incredible. I did make the tweet over the weekend that, you know, the Oscar should go to her. Uh, I don't know what her Oscar chances are. I don't think we need to get into that right now. I'll just uh, say. Let's, let's, no, let's do it. Let's get her nominated <laughs> for Christ's sake. I do want to get her nominated. At the very least, I would love to see her get nominated. And I'm sure we'll, we'll have the campaigns going throughout the rest of the year. But I really, really loved her performance. She is so, so good. And in many ways, the glue to this movie. She is the oh, heart yeah. of it. And without that performance, this film could, could have fallen apart in many ways. But I think she, uh, does such a great job of maintaining uh, that poignancy, thus keeping the drama together for me. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I really like her a lot in this film. Ultimately, a movie I very much do recommend. We have a review for it up at InSessionFilm.com. I will, of course, have thoughts up at Letterboxd.com slash InSessionFilm. If you want to continue the conversation, be sure to check us out over there. And if you agree or disagree with our taste, you can let us know by leaving a comment on our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram page, or you can email us at insessionfilm at gmail.com. For the entire version of our podcast, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher, or check us out online at insessionfilm.com.